Hey everyone, this is Mrs. Lewis. I'm going to go over some arterial blood gases. And I'll do a quick review about just acid base balance. Um, you had this in previous semester, but I wanted to make sure that I did a quick review to jog your memory and help you understand about, because um, we're talking about compensation. I believe in a prior level of nursing school you um, learned about just regular um, acid base imbalance but um, this level four we talk about compensation and we require that you recognize compensation so we're going to talk about it um, so what do, what is arterial blood gases well um, they regulate acid base balance and oxygenation that is what you're blood gases do. The body maintains a steady balance between the acids continually um, during normal metabolism. The bases um, neutralize and promote the excretion of acids, right? So that's what we talk about when we talk about acid base balance uh, because we expect the body, the normal body, to um, balance these, neutralize, um, and excrete the acid. So that's what we're going to talk about. You know, there's a lot of health problems that lead to acid base imbalances diabetes, COPD, kidney disease. Um, so it's important to remember that acid base balance or imbalance is not a disease but a manifestation of an underlying health problem. Again, that's what um, we're thinking about here. What is the underlying problem? Uh, so, you know, you have to consider uh, these things, especially like if there's kidney failure going on and the kidneys aren't, buff, uh, aren't uh, compensating, then, you know, what are you going to see? So that is why we talk about it in level four because of the body compensate compensating so let's just talk about the components um, you know that respiratory therapy you, um, we usually come and draw your ABGs um, and you know that an art line if left in place you can draw ABGs um, from that line so your ABG components are your is your pH which measures hydrogen ion concentration in the blood and it shows your blood acidity or alkalinity. So your pH is your blood basically. Acidic or alkaline. And that is 7.35 to 7.45. And you may hear me interchange um, the base with alkaline, alchemic, base, basic. Um, so uh, just keep that in mind that there's a there's other terminology for other than base or alkaline. And you've got your PCO2. That is your respiratory component, CO2. So that helps you relate it to respiratory. It's the partial pressure of carbon dioxide that's carried by the blood for excretion by the lungs, known as your respiratory parameter. And... your base or your alkaline at 35, less than 35, so your norm is 35 to 45 millimeters of mercury. So that is your carbon, your PCO2. Then your, um, and that is your acid. And then you've got your HCO3 or your bicarb, and that's your metabolic component. Um, it's your metabolic parameter. It reflects the kidney's ability to retain because you know it needs to retain it as well and excrete it um, so retain and excrete bicarbonate and that is um, 22 to 26 milli equivalents per liter um, so that is your uh, measurement for your bicarb or your HCO3 Remember that HCO3 or your bicarb will buffer those hydrogen ions. And what are hydrogen ions but acids, right? 
So just keep that in mind that the bicarb buffers those. And then that is what mostly we're going to talk about um, as, as you're doing. We're giving you problems or we're trying to have you figure up if the patient's, um, what type of state the patient's in. But I didn't want to leave out another part of the ABG component is your PaO2. Um, that's your partial pressure oxygen that is um, arterial. And um, that's just what the PA means, that it is an arterial partial, pre partial pressure that uh, is usually 80 to 100 millimeters of mercury. And less than 80 can, um, can it, um, show you that your patient's hypoxic or they're experiencing some hypoxemia. So that is another good measure on how is your patient exchanging carbon dioxide and oxygen. How are their lungs? How are their alveoli? So that is why it is very important not to forget about the PaO2. And then I wanted to throw in two SpO2 because a lot of people get confused on that. So your SpO2 is just a percent of the hemoglobin bound to the oxygen compared to how much oxygen the hemoglobin can hold. So it's a good, it's always a good reading, but just keep in mind that it is just a percentage, um, <clears throat> but it is a good way, you know, to tell how your patient's doing and if they need some ABGs. So just to review, you know, your acid-base regulation, your body has a, a natural buffer system. Um, changing strong acids to weak ones or binds acids to neutralize their effect. Um, those buffers react immediately. You got your hemoglobin, your phosphate, your amino acids, and they react immediately to any kind of threat. So your hemoglobin neutralizes acids by shifting chloride and hydrogen in and out of the cells using the proteins and hemoglobin. Your phosphate buffers um, system, your phosphate buffer system uses monohydrogen, dihydrogen phosphate to weaken strong acids and um, then excrete those in the urine. So phosphate is uh, key here as well. And then your um, amino acids act similar to bicarb. So all of these components are part of your buffer system that you know um, is found in the solutes in the blood. So keep that in mind. That's an immediate uh, compensation, immediate. Your body immediately goes to bat for you when, when things are off balance. Then you've got your respiratory system acts by excreting CO2 and water via the lungs during expiration. So if you have too much ex, um, CO2, then you're going to excrete it during expiration. Um, then the amount of CO2 in the blood correlates to how acidic the pH. Um, and then your renal system is your metabolic um, acid base regulator. So your renal system regulates acids through absorbing or conserving bicarbonate. And that's through your filtering system in the kidneys. We haven't done the renal lecture yet, but you've got all those nephrons in your kidney that, that, ex, that uh, filter. So um, just keep that in mind that, it's, that your renal system is huge in, in this balance. And then um, the urine, then you've got to waste. So your urine secrete, uh, the urine secreted is more acidic or less acidic, depending on what the body needs. So if, you know, you have a lot of acid in your body, the urine, um, the kidneys will compensate to get rid of that acid. So that's just a review. Uh, urine pH is usually uh, 6, um, normal is 4 to 8. And that's just a good to know. It's not really a need to know, but it's a good to know. So let's talk about our normal values again. 35 to 45 is your PA, uh, CO2, your and that's acidic. So let's talk about hyperventilation. Hyperventilation, so low CO2. When you're hyperventilating, you are getting rid of your CO2. You're breathing off too much. Um, so your pH is going to be elevated. And then when you're not breathing it off, say there's a problem with uh, your lungs, 
uh, disease, um, actually with the lung itself, such as a, an injury, a trauma to the lung. Um, you might have a high CO2 because you're trapping, you're air trapping. You're not able to mechanically get it off or because of the disease, blow off that CO2. So that will lead to acidosis. And then you'll have a low pH. So normal values are your bicarb, 22 to 26. Um, bicarbonate usually is considered alkaline or basic. And a lot of times with diarrhea, you will lose um, your bicarb, right? So it will increase acid. If you're losing your base, you're losing your um, acid, um, then, um, I mean, you're losing your bicarb, you're going to have increase in acid. Just, you know, that's just simple. So um, this contributes to acidosis because there's an imbalance. And then you're vomiting. You're losing your acid because you have acid in your stomach. And that's where a lot of our acid lives, right? So if you're vomiting, you're vomiting off the acid. So you're going to have an increase in bicarb. So you see, you see how you, you can have an imbalance here. And this contributes to alkalosis. So keep that in mind. Let's do some practice. I like to set mine up. Um, I think this is the same way that Mrs. Burgess teaches it. But I like to set it up this way. So I like to put my pH on one side, my um, alkaline on the other, and then I flip flop my pH um, CO2. I got that written wrong there, so I don't want to confuse anybody. So my PaCO2, um, I flip-flop it. So I want all my acids on one side, as you can see, so that this will work. So that's why I flip-flop my carbon dioxide. And then my bicarb, um, I've got it set up right, 22 to 26. So always just remember, if you do it this way, that you are flip-flopping your PaCO2. And then you've got your norm, your, I think, um, this is your normal. This is your middle of the range. Um, 7.40 is your normal so, uh, range. Okay? So... pH is 7.31, that's acidic, so I write acid. So you see how I'm writing it on this side. It'll help me do my uh, figures here. I'm writing it on this side. And then my PCO2 is 52. So again, I look up here, is it acidic or is it alkaline? Well, it is greater than 45, so it's acidic, and I write it over here. And then my, my um, bicarb is normal, 24. So look back up here, 22 to 26, bicarb is normal. So I put it in there for normal. So I've got an acid and an acid. My blood state is acidic, so I know that the answer is going to be something acidic. But then, okay, well, my respiratory component is acidic, so they match. Respiratory acidosis because my bicarb is normal. All right, so let's do this other one. So we got a pH of 7.53. That is, go back up here, alkaline, right? It's greater than 7.45, so it's alkaline or base. So we have an alkaline pH, so that's our blood state. And then our PCO2 is normal because it's in between 35 to 45. And then our HCO3 is 32. Greater than 26 is alkaline. So we have a normal respiratory component, <clears throat> but our bicarb is off. So we know, we know that it's alkalosis 
and because of our bicarb we know that it's metabolic alkalosis. <clears throat> okay, let's keep going. This is just some practice I wanted to go over with you. Um, again, this is, like I said, your chemical buffers on the scene in seconds. Respiratory, um, you eliminate through your breathing um, within minutes. And it can handle mild to moderate shifts. And then your renal um, regulates your bicarb to combat hydrogen losses and gains. It starts in hours, but it's more of a permanent thing. And um, when the other two mechanisms fail, the renal system slowly gets to work, but it can require up to five days to complete. Because again, you gotta think the renal system is very intricate and um, it may take a little longer for that um, compensation to complete. So you got four possible abnormal states, respiratory acidosis, respiratory alkalosis, metabolic acidosis, and metabolic alkalosis. So these are your acid-base imbalances. So two types of compensation. So these um, are full comp fully compensated. That means your pH returns to normal, okay? Um, And then partial compensation means your pH is still out of range. Your body has not compensated fully. So it's just partially compensating. There's something wrong or kidneys hadn't caught up or the kidneys are not able to fully compensate or maybe the lungs aren't able to fully compensate. So a partial, your pH is still out of range because it hasn't completely compensated. The only time compensation occurs is when both the, um, your carbon dioxide and your bicarb are out of range in opposite directions. So these, your, your bicarb and your um, carbon dioxide are going in opposite directions. Okay, so let's recap this. You have four abnormal possible states. Remember, this is abnormal. Your body's not compensating yet when you have just respiratory acidosis or metabolic acidosis. <clears throat> so you will have two, either respiratory, and your blood state and respiratory will be off, and your bicarb will be normal, like we do. or respiratory alkalosis or metabolic acidosis. So those are your four possible abnormal states. It's abnormal. But then the body, like I said, with these compensation mechanisms, will try to compensate. So you'll either have a fully compensated, your body has done its job, or a partial. So the pH is still out of range, the blood is still either acidic or alkalotic, basic, okay? So let's talk about compensation, partial compensation. Um, your PCO2 is all out of range. You see how they're all off. So you want to ask yourself, if, because I'm teaching you how to do your little check where you flip-flop your carbon dioxide, but the best way to know this is to know it without having to write it down on paper, right? So you want to think through it. You want to ask yourself, is a pH acidic or alkaline? And is my carbon dioxide up or down? How would it affect the pH? Um, so you want to think, how would my bicarb affect the pH? What's compensating? What's not compensating? What problems are there? Um, so you want to think, which one caused it so the other one will compensate? So that's kind of how to try to understand it without writing it down because you're not always going to be able to write it down and flip-flop your numbers. This is the, the way I showed you to, to figure these is a fail-proof way, but... It's just maybe a way to check yourself because you really want to understand the human body, your patient, and are they compensating or are they 
Um, are they fully compensated? Are they partially comp? Are they not compensating at all? All right, so let's practice a um, one of these. So I made my little chart. I flip flopped my numbers, and um, before we do our check, let's talk about it. So our pH is seven point three one. It's more acidic. And our PCO2 is acidic, and our bicarb is alkaline. So we have an acid acid alkaline. We have these going in opposite directions right here, but our blood state is acidic. So we know that acid, that we know there's an, um, that there's that the answer is acid. Um, so let's think, is one more acidic than the other? pH is an acid, and it's elevated. <clears throat> PCO2 would contribute to acidosis. So the elevated PCO2, which is your respiratory, would contribute to the acidosis. Your elevated HCO3 would not contribute to the acidosis because it's not acidic. It's alkaline. It's basic. So therefore... This is partially compensated respiratory acidosis. Partially compensated because they're all out of range. And we already decided that the, the blood state is acidotic. And um, that your, because your bicarb is basic and your respiratory, your CO2 is acidic, then we know that your respiratory is contributing to this. So again, you can use your little check check yourself up here with this to make sure you did it right and like I said before I like to write um, acid acid I like to write it on the side to match my thing to double check myself so acid acid alkaline on this side just like over here and your blood state is acidic your respiratory is acidic so you have and but they're all out of wax so you know they're partially compensated so you have partially compensated respiratory acidosis. And let's talk about fully compensated. So your body has compensated effectively. Either your respiratory has done its job or if it's some, there's a metabolic problem, the kidneys have done their job, right? So your pH is normal. Your blood state is normal. The respiratory is either done its job or your kidneys have gotten your blood state back to normal. Um, your PCO2 will be out of range and your HCO3 will be out of range. So you have to ask yourself, <clears throat> is a pH normal? Is a pH more acidic or more base? Not the pH. Yeah, is a pH more acidic or more base? And would the PCO2 contribute to the pH? So would the, would the um, carbon dioxide contribute to this normal pH or would your bicarb contribute to it? So let's do a practice. You have 7.43. I'm drawing my little, um, my little chart. And you have a pH of 7.43. You know, is that more acidic or more basic? Well, it's more basic, so it's alkaline. And is my... No, it's normal, sorry. So your 7.43 is normal. It's right in the middle. Right, of, you know, but it is more towards... So if you think about it, 7.43 is your... As Miss Burgess calls it, your nirvana, right? Your perfect number. So it's a little bit more alkaline because it's 7.43 so it's more on this side of the chart so keep that in mind um, your PCO2 is 54 which is an acid so your PCO2 contributes to um, doesn't really contribute right um, because your pH state is alkaline so but it is um, but the PCO2 is acidotic. And then your HCO3 is 35, which is very alkaline, right? 
22 to 26 so here um, it falls on this side so let's see here so your pH is normal your respiratory component is acidic and your alkaline your um, bicarb is alkaline so we know because we have a normal pH but these two right here are going in opposite directions we know that this is fully compensated right your body has made a uh, balance to get your blood pH back back into normal range so we know that it's fully compensated because they're all off okay and we know that the um, bike we know that the pH is more towards bicarb and your bicarb is uh, um, your your bicarb number your pH is more toward alkaline and your bicarb is more alkaline so what do you think it is metabolic alkalosis so again you want to check yourself you want to look at your um, look at your chart up here you have a normal you have um, normal and then you have these going in opposite directions um, which is your metabolic alkalosis all right so let's talk about um, these pictures are great um, these will help you um, just kind of visualize some things. So metabolic alkalosis, what does that tell you? Well, um, they're losing. It's metabolic, so it tells you renal. Um, alkalosis tells you base, so they're losing acid, right? And um, increased base, as you see here. Decrease acid and increase base. And um, you've got your kidneys here because that's, that's what's important. That's this whole buffering system. And um, you, these are the things you might see. Nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, dysrhythmias. Uh, and then the causes down here. So think about when you excessively suction someone. You're suctioning out all their acid out of their stomach so they could become alkalotic, right? Um, and then you want to think about severe vomiting. They're getting rid of it. They're getting rid of it. Diuretics because of the kidneys. And then um, excessive sodium bicarb can cause it. You can get hypokalemia because, again, you're getting rid of stuff. You're getting rid of things that are needed. And then, of course, you're going to see your tremors and um, tingling, paresthesias, and then even level change in level of consciousness. Um, again, remember alkalosis. You're losing your acid um, by vomiting. So vomiting in G tube. And then acidosis. You want to think metabolic again. Metabolic is regulated by the kidneys. So you want to think um, too much acid too little bicarb so you're losing your bicarb usually a lot of the time through diarrhea okay that's diarrhea too much acid low bicarb so you're losing out um, your uh, bicarb and you're becoming acidotic now this can be serious also you'll see this with renal failure because the kidneys are not able to get rid of the waste, the acid, the hydrogen ions. Um, so, so you will see metabolic acidosis with kidney failure, and we'll talk about that later. Um, but DKA can cause it. Um, again, renal failure, and then of course diarrhea. So just remember diarrhea because you're um, acidotic. You're losing it, you know, through the other end. And then respiratory alkalosis, um, that is...
you're blowing off the CO2. You're blowing it off. You're getting rid of it. You're getting rid of too much, too much CO2. This is hyperventilating. So think about someone that's hyperventilating. They're breathing really, really fast. They're breathing off all their CO2. They're blowing off the acid. This can happen in mechanical ventilation if the if settings are not right as well. Um, and then also anxiety, fear. So you're going to see um, lightheadedness, um, rapid, deep breathing. So all of these things, um, seizures can even occur. Um, tachycardia, decreased blood pressure. Um, so you have an increased loss of carbon dioxide from the lungs. Maybe. So respiratory acidosis. They're retaining CO2. They're air trapping. They're uh, there's something wrong with the lung, like I said, trauma or, or a um, disease process going on. So they can't get rid of the CO2 and they become acidic. Their blood state becomes acidic because they can't get rid of it like normally, blowing it off. So this can be respiratory depression even someone like that overdosed they're not taking deep breaths somebody after surgery they're not taking enough deep breaths they have too much too much anesthesia too much pain medicine on board um airway obstruction um all any kind of lung problem ARDS, pe copd um and again even even your trauma to the lungs can cause this because they just cannot get rid of the co2 so they're holding on to it. They're not breathing effectively. Um, the treatment for this is to vent them, right? If they're not able to get off the CO2 and they're just holding on to all this acid, um, respiratory acidosis is not a good thing. So um, the treatment is to vent, to put them on a ventilator um, to relieve that work and to also help the person get that CO2 off and get rid of it. All right, so I have some practice here. I'm going to let you go through this and practice. So I would say go ahead and write all these down. So write all of these down and then um, we'll just kind of go through them. So, so hopefully you've written all of these down and you have worked them out and I am going to go over the answers with you. So I, instead of writing it, now that I feel more comfortable, I just made check marks by it. So I know that um, they're all, um, your pH is alkaline so you're looking at your your um, chart your PaCO2 is alkaline right and your HCO3 is acidic so you've got a partially compensated respiratory alkalosis and you know that it's partially because they're all off right Alright, so I'm going to reveal the other answers for you so that you can check yourself. There's also some practice question, uh, practice, good practice in um, NIP. They actually have some um, practice problems and some worksheets. So I would definitely recommend getting that and having some extra practice. You can find extra practice online. And then we are going to go over um, some stuff. We're we'll probably go over this in class as well so um, and then maybe some active learning but um, that's that's all I got on this and I if you have any questions please see me please reach out and ask me and I will see you soon